So what I really hear you saying is, how do we tell the difference between healthy relationships and unhealthy relationships? Is this a healthy relationship or is this an unhealthy one? Because relationships are so important to our emotional health, our mental health, our spiritual health, even our physical health. We're meant to be connected to other people. So I heard you say in a relationship where you had questions about whether you were being manipulated or whether there was health there, you went to healthy relationships in your life, your marriage, your friends, to ask questions about that. And so I want people to think of it as the difference between a healthy relationship or an unhealthy relationship, because while sometimes it's obvious that someone is manipulative, we don't really know what's going on inside the person that we're in the relationship with. And I don't want people to get caught up trying to figure out the intention of the other person, because it doesn't really matter what the intention is. What is the outcome in the relationship? That's the question that helps us speak to health. And if you, when this person is asking you for things or demanding things of you, you catch yourself saying two things. I can't say no, or I have to say yes. Anytime you're having this sense of I can't or I have to, you are placing yourself in a position to be manipulated by the dynamics of that relationship. So whether that's your mom calling for the 10th time today and you say, I have to answer the phone, or it is, you know, someone saying, can you come down to the church and do this last minute volunteer thing? And you think I can't say no, something's going on. The words I can't and I have to are never true. They're restricting your free will. And if you're willing to have your free will restricted, you're giving from a place that is not true. It's not free. And so at some point, you're going to be mad about it because you gave something that wasn't really um, free, that you didn't give freely. So that's critical. And the other thing is about remembering it's the relationship dynamic. It doesn't matter if the other person's intentions are not bad. You don't have to have bad intentions toward me to be bad for me. That's very important because when women are often trying to get out of manipulative relationships, friendships, uh, marriage relationships, whatever, romance, church relationships, they're like, well, they mean well. You don't have to be, um, you don't have to have bad intentions toward me to be bad for me. And that's a really important distinction to make when you're talking about, is this relationship healthy or is it not healthy? I think when it comes to, like you said, outside of abusive situations, although we sometimes feel like we don't need to say that explicitly, but let's go ahead and take a moment to say that explicitly, yes. that God does not require you to stay in an unsafe and abusive yes. situation. And if anybody is telling you right. different, yeah. it's a lie from the pit of hell. Yes. I'm sorry, but you yes. do not have to stay in a situation where you are being abused. And sometimes the desire to see the relationship better, that you just want the relationship, but not the abuse. I do understand that, my sister, but you are not required to be harmed by another person, to um, deserve a relationship, or to please God. That is not the case. So I want to take the opportunity to say that unequivocally. Outside of a relationship where abuse is concerned, whether it's a friendship or romantic relationship or a relationship with a minister, whatever it may be, I love how Natalie said, I am a person who says yes. I like to say yes. That is a beautiful thing. I don't want you to change who you are. We love Yes, people, not because we want to manipulate them, but because they are usually just warm. They're also a lot of fun. They offer emotional support. They're, you're our best friend. You're that person that we know we can lean on. And everybody um, loves to have that. And it's such a beautiful gift to offer to relationships. So I don't want you to change. All I would suggest is to elevate the value that you place on your yes so that perhaps you distribute it a little less often. And as you become comfortable with saying yes less often and recognizing that each time you say yes, you are actually also saying no. You're saying, yes, I'll do this for you. So now I'm saying no to the extra time I was going to spend with my kids. Yes, I'll do this for you, but I'm actually saying no to the time I was going to work out. So every time you say yes, there's a no. So all you need to do is just kind of turn up the volume on how much you value your yes and distribute it a little less often. And as you grow in strength in that, and as you develop in that, the relationships around you that will not tolerate that growth will fall away. So don't allow yourself to get focused on, do I need to cut this relationship? Because for my relational people, people are just highly connected. The idea of cutting relationship is so painful. That's like the nuclear option. If you start there, you're focusing outside of yourself instead of focusing on watering the good ground within you. 
building that uh, valuation of your yes, distributing it deliberately instead of recklessly. And as you grow in your comfort in that and your confidence in that, anyone who treasures you for you will still be around and they will adjust. And the ones who don't will start to fall away and the decision won't be very hard. And I'll just add this one because it's so hard for people who love to say yes to say no. Like the word no drives them crazy. (laughs) And everyone's always like, well, no is a complete sentence. Well, not for everyone. And I think it's fine if that's not how you operate. It's okay to say, I would really like to say yes. And this no is tough on me. But I'm, I need to say no because I have made this promise to spend this extra time with my kids or I have made a promise to myself to go out and get some exercise today. So I need to say no, but I'd really like to say yes. Next time, maybe if you give me a couple of weeks notice, I'll have a better chance of being able to say yes. It's totally fine. I know people tell you, you don't have to explain yourself. You don't have, No, you don't have to, but you might choose to if it makes you feel better in your process, because you're you and don't let anyone give you a formula for how you say no, Uh, just value your yes and distribute it a little less widely. All those other relationships will fall in place. Hi everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe today and you'll never miss a new upload. Thanks for being a part of our Better Together community.